All right, so yesterday we had one question. I mean, yeah, we kind of do a short equation, and I think we start right at this equation over here, no? Okay, and we said that there were two uh, journey cases that was reverse bending plus static torque and reverse bending with reverse shear, no? The two cases. So now it's going to be very simple. Let's see how the equation we just, the journey equation will simplify for each one of these cases, and then we do an example. Let me know if I need to move the page because I cannot see it from, uh, from here, okay? All right, so for the first case, so let's say case one, is that is the one that is used the most, which basically considers reverse, bending, plus, Static torque. So here I just want to do here a clarification is that in this notation, really compared to the uh, Goodman line, reverse is basically the same thing as two training. Okay. All right, so do you don't think that really two different, completely two different methods? Okay, so if, the, if we have reverse bend, bending, we're gonna say that the average, which I think is the one we call the membrane on the other formulation is equal to zero. So basically, what does that mean? In this case, we just assume that Everything is rotating about this value here. There is no, there is no medium or mid-range value. And here we're gonna assume that the fluctuating shear or alternate uh, fluctuating equal to alternating. Everything is notation is not important. And this one will also be equal to zero. So substituting into another notes from the other day, but I don't know if we gave a name to that equation. Substitute into that equation, just give it a name. The one we just finished last, last lecture. Okay, so just call it whatever. And do we use a letter A, B, or let's just call it A in our case. So, so substituting into A. It simplifies to sigma sub r, which is the reverse. Well, actually, oh, okay, I changed the order here. K sub t s yield as s endurance. Everything squared plus three times the of a shear square needs to be lower or equal to the S yield divided by the N. I think we use lowercase n if I remember properly. Square.
Okay, I'm gonna leave it as it is here, and then we're gonna do case two, which is the most general, but not as widely used, which is reverse. Bending plus reverse torque. So in that case, again, we're gonna have, we assume this one would be equal to zero. Now we assume the average shear stress will be equal to zero. And I can write here. Substituting into A, it simplifies. Y as endurance, so the first term doesn't change. I think that changes is a second term plus three times D tau sub R K sub T S Y. Or as endurance, everything squared must be lower or equal to S yield. Uh, now, sigma R is the alternative or the reverse. Remember here, reverse fluctuating that we have here. So basically, then the idea is go and substitute for whatever simplification you do into this equation here. All right? But this is important one, and to know what happened. So, oh, maybe let's discuss here this equation, okay? Since we are here and we have that. So here, this value that they put average. What does that mean? What are those values over here average? Can I do a figure here? Those will be the values, for example, if we take here in function of time, the stress or the shear, right? if initially there is no load, this will be between a zero value. Is that correct? But let's say that initially you have a load. So in that case, what will happen? The fluctuating, the reverse or the alternative is gonna be about a fixed value. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay, that's what these values are over here on the average, is that initially there's an average force. So for example, if you have a torque, uh, you are, if you have a shaft, let's say initially there is a constant force on it. So then this will create a constant bending stress, normal stress, and also create a normal, uh, a, a normal, I mean an average normal stress, and this will also create an average bending stress, no? That will be constant. And then the structure will be fluctuating between these values. Okay, and now these are the values due to the dynamic load. You see, these ones are related to the reverse or alternating or fluctuating, whatever you want. So these values here are related to the static loading. These two values over here are related to the dynamic loading. Okay, that's what's important here to understand. All right, so let's do one example. So let me write it over here, since we have time. So let's say A. Reverse. 
revolving shaft carries a bending moment of 20,000 inch per pound. So when you read a, a, a problem, so if this, you read this, so what does that mean? That means that it's going to carry an average value for the bending stress, no? That would be constant. Yeah, this will be related to the static loading. And a torque of 80,000 inch per pound. Okay, so Luta. Okay, so let's see now what they say. Assume that the torque, okay, so now they come into fluctuating loads. So the torque fluctuates twenty percent uh, each way. From the mean value. Okay. So let's put it here. If the stress. Concentration factor for bending and torsion is one point three five. Determine if the design is safe for an endurance stress of 44,000, a yield stress of 90,000, or this one should be PSI, I got for the other one. And a diameter of three point three seven five inch. Okay, so here I'm gonna need your help for with the calculation. So let's see. Always when you read a program statement, first thing to do is some type of three point diagram. Let's say we are here, all right. Okay, so let's see. A revolving shaft carries a bending moment of 20, uh, 20, so let's say here I would put N equal twenty seven thousand inch per pound. Now they tell you that the diameter is 
3.375, and that is a torque. Let me put this way the torque equal to 80,000 inch LB that look to it. You're going out to the left. Are you turning off to the left? Or break? This one, I'm going to make it counterclockwise. Oh, what do I need to turn to the left? Saying is it going to the left? It doesn't matter if you go clockwise or counterclockwise. I just made it counterclockwise because that's the way I do it, Johnny. Just to show that it's rotating. Okay, so now what I will do, personally, since I, I need to find it, let's see what is our initial equation. The one we had initially, okay? And I will start from zero. So, uh, so let's say here recalling. The equation that we have, sigma average plus K of T sigma sub R, SY over S endurance squared plus three times tau average plus K sub T, Sigma sub R S yield S endurance. Everything squared and it should be equal to S Y over N squared. Uh, wait, did I? You see, this also safety factor. Okay, I don't read this. Add a safety factor here for S E and uh, let's say uh, an N. Here I'm just gonna add over here N safety factor, so I will make it more complete this way. Uh, equal to... We're not solving for the safety factor? The improvement safety No, basically what we're gonna compare here is to know if this value here on the right hand side of the equation is basically bigger or lower than this one. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be a question to find for the safety factor, but this is not the case. So again, here to me, it will be important, okay? Because this is the part that doesn't mean this only just one answer will depend on your design, no, as an engineer. So in this case, what are we considering? And we have to do the calculation for me because I don't have the calculations. So in this case, let's first look at the bending. With the bending load, be, we will be looking at the static, Plus dynamic, only the static or only the dynamic? You read this problem. What do you think we'll be doing? The bending moment, we create what? We create that the static loading, that the loading, or what? The bending moments, so you want, okay, that would be assumption to dynamic. Would that be okay? Okay, so you want to create dynamic. So let's over here. All right. So let's over here. Uh, let's just look here. Bending moment. M equal to 27,000. HLB. Okay, I'm doing this using your assumptions. So if that is the case that you are doing, if you say this is just producing a dynamic, then you are assuming that the edge value will be zero, no? <clears throat> That's what you just told me. You're just going to create this one. This is a static term. This is the dynamic term. So then let's see what will be then. So then what does that mean? That we'll be solving here for sigma sub r. If you want, let's say we'll be here to, which will be equal to sigma x. So in this case, it should be equal to what? M times what? 
there will be the maximum the maximum stress. D over two, okay, the outside, and now we need to divide this by what will be I x x. That probably will need your help over here. X, X. I remember properly is pi over sixty four diameter to the fourth. But let's see, this will give us what the sigma sub R will be equal to M times D over two. Divided by five over sixty four d to the fourth. So this will give us what m uh, thirty two m divided by pi d to the cube. Can someone do that calculation, please? You see, I try to simplify for you. I do symbolic as long as I can. Guys, the best way to understand the problem is to do the problems in class all of us together. Okay? Do the calculation. So. Seven thousand point nine. Then, just for this case, can we just put seven one fifty four? It will be safer. No, anyway. Okay, you want to be accurate? You can do accurate. Okay, but let's do this. Okay, so we know k of t. What will be k of t? K of t will be here in this plan. They say also that k of t is how much. Oh, wait, stress concentration factor is 1.35. All right, a safety factor, let's use 2.5, okay? Sorry for that. Change this. Otherwise, it's going to become 2.5. 2 okay, so we took care of this term over here. <clears throat> now, let's take care of the... Other terms. So now let's discuss the torque. So the torque is going to produce what? It's going to produce static oil, dynamic oil, or static and dynamic. This is your interpretation. This is what you need to do as an engineer, no? Then the rest is just to substitute into, into equations. I mean, dynamic is going to be for sure, it's moving. But it's static component, right? Because it's not fluctuating about zero, it's fluctuating about 80,000. Perfect. Yeah. So that's exactly what I want to do here. So now let's look at this. Maybe we can do a fifth. So basically, now we're going to look at the torque. Which is T equal to 80,000. So for this one, you said exactly what I wanted to hear. Oops, uh, okay. So time is with this here. What do you just say? Is that it will be fluctuating here between the whatever stress will be due to the 80,000. So let's say it will be the what? TR over J now, the constant value. And then let's say here we have the plus 20%, minus 20%. So it will be something like this. So this will be here the tau average again on the figures. Okay. 
Okay, so in this case, what we're gonna have tau average is gonna be equal to the TR over J. And again, this will be equal to what? T, what would be the shear maximum? Of the outside radius divided by J, we're gonna do as before. What is J? Should be by, is twice the other moment of inertia. So if we do the substitution here, you will get what? Uh, 16 T divided by pi D to the cube. Which is equal to what? <laughs> Guys, remember that when we do this in class, this is the time to ask me as many questions as you want. All right? Don't let yourself not understand something because it's like the snowball effect. Okay, that's somebody back up that one. Somebody else? Perfect. Okay. So now we need this. Now we need to find the sigma sub r in our equation, which would be the fluctuating or the reverse or whatever you want to call it. What do we know? How much is that one? It's simply 40%, no? So what can you do? We multiply the volume 20%. So what would that give you? The same value as before plus 20% will be whatever, 12, almost 13,000, I guess. Well, so one, two, seven, one, eight, okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so now what do we need to do? We need to go back and substitute into this equation. Okay, so let's just say here. So substituting. Into. A sub T sigma sub R S sub Y S endurance square plus three times the average shear plus K sub T tau sub R S Y S endurance everything square needs to be equal that s over n square so let's see what we get i mean now it's just a matter to substitute value so let's do it so k of t we say was equal to what 1.35, so 1.35 times sigma sub r, we say 7,154 times the yield value is given to us to be 90,000 divided by the endurance value, which is 44,000.
everything squared plus three times the average that we calculate to be here, 10,598 plus 1.35. I ran out of space, but it doesn't matter. Tau sub R, 12,718. Times ninety thousand divided by forty four thousand square needs to be lower. Sorry for that, guys. I know I'm calling these values now very close to each other. Square. So, what is SY is ninety thousand. Divided by what do we say for n at the end 2.5? So, I mean, I, sorry for that, I know you have to be doing these calculations, but. but let me know what you find out here. What do you find? Well, let's just do the right hand side. What do you find for the right hand side? 90,000 divided by 2.5 squared. It's probably a huge number, but it doesn't matter. What do you get for that one? In the other side, I got uh, six point two. For the right side, the left side. So what did you find? Six point six six zero. Okay. I mean, now you need to do the, the easy one, which is on the right hand side. I got four point four four times ten to the Somebody else for point four four. Yeah, right side is okay. Four point four four. Then to the nine. Yeah. I also got something to the left side. Wait, why is it two? Oh, and change the yeah. number's not. Yeah, because I got 1.296. Yeah, I got 1.296 times. Okay, sorry, I just put 1.3 then 10 to the 9. Yeah, 1.3. On the left side, I got it. Somebody check the left hand side. The left side, I got 2.48 times 10 to the 9. Can you change anything on the left side? No, I got that. when I put that in, it, you got that value. I got that value. Okay, so guys, check. Okay, we have application, but let's go for these ones. They can two person to got that one and two got this one. Okay, but again, that's what I'm saying. If it's good if you do that in class, you see that we are having the whole class is having time, I mean, not a difficult time, but we need to do this multiple times to get to the right value. If you don't see what's going to happen in class, the daily exam, you're not going to get it. No, I know that you know how to use a calculator. And that's what I'm saying. But you know how to use it. The reason is you don't practice, so you might find something wrong in your calculation. No, that is not that you don't understand using your calculator. Okay, that's what I say. And you need to practice. So, what are you doing? What is your conclusion? The so conclusion here you can say design. is not safe. So since we have plenty of time, I think so, no? I don't think it's, what time is it? 
Then 23, we have what, uh, until 11? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, and basically, this is almost the last thing that Mateo was speaking. I told you we were way in advance. I mean, I don't know if we're in advance, so, anyway. I'm supposedly the one I developed this course like many years ago. I had shell design in detail. Last time I met the instructor that are teaching this with me, they all said that they cut the shell design, the whole thing. So <laughs> if I want to be, if we want to cover all the same material, basically that's it. So from now on, like I told you earlier, the only thing we do is going back, taking photos, and solving them together in class. No? But if we have time, okay, let's get on something here. So design is not safe. So let's ask over here. Uh, what should be the shaft diameter for? A safe design. So obviously, in this case, what I will do is what is the best option? I will go and do it with MATLAB. I mean, MATLAB or software because, I mean, or you can put, the only times they will put all these, all these calculations into Excel, no? So you can change the values, but let's be a little bit more engineer and do that in MATLAB, no? And see what should be the value for this, for the, for the diameter so that it's safe. So help me here a little bit. Try to do this with you here live. All right, uh, what is this? Uh, okay, I think this is an old example from us. Don't show me again. New script. I like, do I like script? I know that I do that. It's because I find out that supposedly when you create a section, you can only execute that section. And then I get crazy because I like to execute everything. Okay. So here, let's say what I do all the time in this, I do clear all. If you got another good habit, let me know. Okay. Let's save this one file, save us. Uh, here we go, Spring 2023. So let's see, MATLAB. Okay, can, can we call this one shaft? Oops, sorry. Design one. Oh, and let's put it here. Here we're using the von Mises criteria. That way you will have this one. Okay, saved. So, okay, since we have plenty of time, let's say ME304, all this stuff is not necessary. Shard design for one misses. Failure cut. I'll give you this file at the end of the class. Okay, just remind me, I will put it in Canvas. Uh, so let's say here, Let's say what is given. So let's see what is given. Uh, the bending moment was how much? 27,000. So if you want to be detailed, you can put over here, whatever. Bending moment. Bending moment in inch LB. Then what do we have? Torque equal to 80,000? Correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Just read that by memory. We can put here torque uh, inch LB. I'll give you this file, okay? Uh, what else do we have? 60 factor of 2.5. And then we have K sub T, how much was K sub T? 1.35, okay, 
Oops. All right. Stress. Concentration. Factor. Then what do we have? We have also those uh, SY. How much was SY? 44,000? Oh, that's it. 90,000. It's just the endurance one. 90,000. So let's say uh, this should be what? The yield. Stress. You are welcome to use sigma Y, okay? As you, that one is the one that's 44, no? Thank you. Uh, this was the ultimate stress. And guys, I mean, I don't know for classes. We'll be good if you do this because sometimes on the assignment you might have to reuse. I mean, you might have to reuse these ones and you can check your answers. No, okay. I'm just doing detail because we have time. Uh, oh, okay. Yes, it's endurance stress. I don't know why. Thank you. You are paying more attention than I am here. Endurance stress. Uh, what should we have? Let's say, and then we have here, let me just jump one value. Let's say here, initial diameter. What was our initial diameter? 3.375, okay. Let's say here, shot diameter, inches here, if I want to be more detailed, I should as well, but PSI, PSI. Okay, leave a couple of spaces here, all right? Then we go back, or we'll do the for loop, but let's just put the stuff that we know. So let's see. Uh, Sigma R, we say was going to be equal to what? M times O, D over two. So maybe we can do stuff outside as well. Okay, let me put some stuff over here. Then here we're going to have what? I was equal to pi over 64 times D. To the fourth. Moment of inertia. What should be the units for this? Perfect. And then we have J here, which is pi divided by 32 times D to the fourth. And this one is also a moment of inertia, but generally they call it polar moment of inertia. Inches to the fourth. Okay. So let's say we have this divided by I. All right. Even if I was you, I would do probably this. So that way you can use this for any problem. SG in our case, we said that this would be equal to what? Zero, no? Let's make a general problem. Then what do we have? Okay, let, let's start, let's write this and then we do it. This would be T times D over two divided by J. And now at this point we say that the tau sub R sub R was equal to what? 1.2 times the tau average. Okay, so maybe let's start here since we have time. What should be this value over here? Uh, so let's say it would be average, static, Normal stress, now if I need to write something. Uh, 
will be this one. How do you want to call this one? Want to call it fluctuating, reverse, alternating, dynamic, reverse. All right, reverse, perfect. I mean, I don't mind. I'm kind of interested what they use. So reverse. I see the R that takes you since. I know that's what I use it. So normal stress. Okay, but I'm gonna add here. What is the notation we use when we use the uh, Goodman sign? I think it was called alternating. No, that way we can make the connection. All right. Now this one will be what. Average static <laughs> shear stress. And this one we can call it reverse. Alternate it. Shear stress. And now maybe help me over here. I'm gonna write this as left hand side and right hand side. So left hand side is what is it? Uh, SG average plus KT, no? KT times SG sub R. Oops, I put sigma SG sub R times S. Y as endurance, all that, all that stuff square plus three. Let me do this, might be a little bit faster. Maybe, yes, yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Go be best. So, this should be now the tau average plus k sub t tau sub r, and the rest should be the same. No. No, just, I'm just three out front, I have to three times. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's three because it's bone misses, correct. So this would be the left-hand side. Maybe we can go and check now our calculations <laughs> for the evil that stuff, that way we, we know. And right-hand side is SY divided by N. Yeah. Everything squared. Okay, so initially let's do the first part of the problem so let's see where are we here okay so this is the first part of the problem basically this is what we just did so let's run this one so right hand side yes 1.2960 10 to the 9 we put 1.3 good enough and 6.6605 10 to the 9 okay all right so we say not safe now Basically, let's see what we need to do here. What can we do this? What could be the easiest way to do this? We can do a loop, no? Let's say for, uh, what can we do this? Okay, there's multiple ways, but let's say this one. Let's do 20 cases here and see what happens. We can do more. Let's say here will be, uh, this should be an equal. Plus equals, so let's put over here. That yeah, just put over here now D, let's say D initial. Oh, it might be a bit easier with this. All right, that way I only change one here. I can put just D will be equal to D initial. Plus what do you want the increment to be? Or is there a command called increment? One one, whatever, point two. One one. Okay, so basically what I'm saying here is that over here, or maybe I have to do the way around. This here, I put the increment outside now. 
afterwards. Oh. I see it beforehand. Yeah, yeah. Control Z. I'll put it outside of the for loop too if you want it. Yes. Let's put it here outside. Increment. What do we say? One one. One two around. All right, so now at the end, what do we need to do over here? Uh, maybe we can just do now an if condition. So let's say if left hand side lower or equal to right hand side, uh, what does that mean? Display whatever, not save. Less than that. Even if it's equal, then it's safe. That's fine. All right. Else. Display. Save. Design. And for the source. Why did you do this stuff here? Okay. Just yeah, it's probably my fault, like always. I always tell you, when you do a mistake, John, it's always your fault and not the software. So, and, and then this will be the end for the loop, no? Oh, let me just put it for You just forgot the D in the house display. Ah, okay, yeah. Right. Display, and that's camera here, okay. Why did I put this stuff? I never put this stuff, okay. So hopefully now with work, let's see what will happen. You have to we we'll call it the okay. uh, you probably need to move those like inertia, moment of inertia. Okay, let's see, but these this one here, no? Yeah, but it's not sent before you click the moment of inertia. Let's put the I and the J inside. The I and J line had to go in the for loop. So right. why is that going to change? Oh, because it changed the value. Yeah, absolutely correct. You see, that one need your help here. Okay, so here we go. So let's. I mean, this is not needed, but Johnny, I like to organize personally this way when you do a for loop. I put everything on the same, at the same level. Control AI and do that for you. Really? Yeah. Let me undo this stuff. I want to. I want to learn something. So now I can just get Control AI. Control A and Control I. Control A. And now what? Control I. Yeah, but this is going to do the whole document. Yeah, it'll indent yeah, it properly. Just like everything they control. Everything they want. Yeah. So you'll see it and adjust it. Oh, okay, that's perfect. You see, I learned something. I learned also learned something from you guys. You might want to sort of comment in the initial I and J outside of the for loop, or else it will still error. Like, this one here? No, like. Oh, in here, yeah, yeah. yeah. So let me just. Can I just put a. Yeah, this. All right, you see? You're good at this. All right, so hopefully now. Okay, so save these out already right away. So. Yeah. So maybe I should have seen what should be the value. So maybe when it's same design, and I put here plot D I or D. What's, how do we call that one? D. Let's see what happened now. So let's see. Same design is already at. It looks like right away. I don't think it ever. How do you do your increment? Yeah, let's see what happened here. So let's let's do this here. What happened? D equals di plus increment. So I think it's going to be. It's always going to take the same one. Uh, okay. Increment times i. You do increment All times right. i, which you can do. Yeah. And okay. again, the first one met the question. And then we'll go. But it's still going to be the first one because it looks like some of the first one is started to the right. Oh, so not save, not save. That doesn't make sense. 
That's the first one. Oh, that makes sense. That doesn't make sense. How do we have a brown body statement wrong? Like, like the if it's safe or not safe, it would be flipped on. Let's uh, let's show you what we do here. If left hand side is lower than hard side, it is not safe. Oh, it's reverse. So I was going too fast. If left hand side is higher, right, it's not safe. Else would be this. Yeah. There we go. It'll flip everything. Oh, yeah, it will flip everything. So now basically we can say that it's safe starting at. So we do increment of 1.5, safe design, safe design. So it looks like right away now. But... <clears throat> and it would be good to see one that is not safe. No, ah, here we go. So not safe for this one, so for the whatever, few first one. So 3.375 is the first one, and it doesn't get safe until you get to a radius of 4.475. Okay. okay. Yeah, almost ready. So we can just go over here to the page if you want. Just have one little line over here and say what. So let's over here using using MATLAB code. It is found that the minimum diameter for safe design is D equal to what to four point four seven zero was I think that's what it was four point four seven five so it's control index basically no in MATLAB Control A is to select everything. Control index there. There's also a button on the top. I mean, maybe you can teach me something else. It's like, because it drives me crazy. I use this. Let me just do like a little summary. Okay, so basically, I'm almost going to do just a summary of the course. It's not that much that we have done. I mean, depend how much we want to go in details. But basically, what have we done? So this is, if you want, all the knowledge that you need to know in this. Uh, Here and in the moments, equations plus figures. No, then Combine learning, find the laws, find the combine. Stresses. Normal. And shear. Next thing we have done is what? Static.
fellow cartoonists, we have done what? The principal stresses. The max she stresses and the what Mrs. stresses. And finally, what have we done? The dynamic. Federal criteria, if you want, I want to put three. If you want, we have done the Goodman, Goodman line. Modify Goodman lines and then The bomb says Katria. Okay, so I think you had did you have an assignment for today? You have something for next week, no? For Tuesday? For Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. So my plan is that unless, I mean, you want to cover something specific, are you interested in something? Do you want me to cover in this class? Are you interested? Do you want me to cover the stuff on how to find the stresses, for example, on a reinforced concrete? Yeah, we could. So next time we do that, and then probably we will do the following class. I will do a class if you have questions, the solution of the assignment. And what I'm going to be doing then is I will just come to class every single class with a problem that we all work on it. Is that okay? And then we're going to be doing that all the way through the semester. So if there is something you want to work on, let me know, and we can do first about that stuff more specific. Okay? Hello, seven. Yes. Today is what? Remind me to we check it. I mean, let's say now. Let's wait. That's where we're going to find out now the exam, the exam date. So. And 